So, SpaceX just did something that totally surprised NASA with their new idea for a moon base called Alpha. Instead of building a base on the moon, they're going to lay their whole starship on its side to be the base. This wild new idea could get rid of dozens of supply trips that other groups will need. But here's the part that most people don't get. This isn't just about building it fast. There's a secret smart reason that could decide who wins the new race to space. How does this sideways trick even work? And why could this one new idea give America a lead that no one can beat in living on the moon forever? Let's get right into it. SpaceX's sideways trick isn't just a cool idea. It's fixing a problem that smart space engineers have been stuck on for years. Here's exactly how they plan to safely tip a 400-foot-tall rocket on its side on the moon without any cranes or big machines. The big idea is their special Astruum tool. Think of it like doing a careful heart surgery with building machines, but backward. Moon rovers first dig a very carefully planned ditch, basically making a perfect bed for the giant starship. But here's a little secret most people miss. This isn't just digging any old hole. The digging has to be perfect for the moon's dirt, for the ship's heavy weight, and for how the ground changes in the moon's super hot and cold temperatures. Next up is the super smart air cushion system. Imagine the fanciest airbag in the whole world. They put blow-up cushions near Starship's landing legs, which makes a gentle 15-degree ramp toward the spot they dug out. When the huge 120-meter ship slowly tips over onto this cushion, it's like watching a skyscraper do a slow-motion ballet dance. And here's something that not many people know. The whole thing happens with the moon's gravity, which is only one-sixth of Earth's, and that actually helps point one. What would be impossible to do on Earth becomes possible on the moon, even though it brings new problems like the moon dirt acting weird and dust getting into important parts. Once it's lying down, rovers pile up moon dirt, called regolith, all around the ship. This makes a natural shield from dangerous space rays that could make you really sick in just a few months. The dirt also keeps it from getting too hot or cold, and protects it from tiny space rocks, basically turning plain moon dirt into a fancy defense system. Now, think about what NASA is doing. They want to send up rooms that are already built on many $2 billion rocket launches, and then have astronauts in big puffy suits try to put them together. Or there's China's plan, which is to use complicated mining machines for months before they can build a place to live. SpaceX's idea is to land one time, tip it over, and you're good to go. We'll talk more about this later, but first, let's see how they plan to live inside this sideways spaceship. The way they change the inside is where it gets really awesome. The part of the starship where people live, which is normally up and down, becomes a flat, six-floor building that's 50 meters long. The first floor has all the things for life support, making power, recycling water, and storing tools. The second floor is for growing food using special water gardens, which is super important if you're staying for many years. But the real story starts when you figure out this isn't just a shelter. It's like they're building Earth's first real city block on another world. This leads to something really amazing about their timing and their plan. While other groups are planning moon bases for the 2030s, SpaceX could have theirs up and working by 2026 with the Artemis 3 mission. That's not just starting early, it's a lead that could last for a whole generation of space travel. Here's the smart plan that most experts are missing. Whoever builds on the moon first doesn't just win the moon, they control the front door to Mars, asteroids, and treasures in deep space worth trillions of dollars. NASA's Lunar Gateway is the old way of thinking. It's complicated, expensive, and needs all the countries to work together perfectly. The project is already costing $4.1 billion more than they planned and has delays because it's hard to get different countries' parts to work together. One little problem with matching parts could mess up years of work. China's International Lunar Research Station, which they're doing with Russia, is the total opposite. They want to build everything from scratch using stuff they find on the moon. It's a big idea, for sure. But is it a good idea for the first missions? Probably not. Their plan needs them to send mining machines, factories, and building robots before anyone can even live there safely. If one machine breaks, the astronauts would be stuck with no place to live. So why would SpaceX take the risk with their sideways idea? Because they're playing a totally different game. Instead of building a base, they're just using their transport ship again. This isn't just cheaper, it's a super smart move. And this is where it gets really interesting. The numbers show what's really going on. Building a moon base the old way needs 20 to 30 separate rocket launches that cost 2 to 4 billion dollars each. SpaceX's plan needs the first Starship landing, and then maybe 3 or 4 more trips to bring supplies. 
we're talking about $50 to $100 billion compared to $5 to $10 billion for the same kind of base. But there's something most people don't think about with their choice of location. Landing at the South Pole isn't just about getting to the water ice. It's about controlling the best piece of land in the whole solar system. Areas that are always in the shade could have billions of tons of water, while mountains nearby get sunshine almost all the time for solar power. Whoever builds their stuff their first controls are stepping stone to the rest of the solar system. What this means for the timeline goes way past just exploring the moon. A good moon base alpha in 2026 gets SpaceX ready for Mars missions in the early 2030s, maybe years and years before anyone else. This isn't just about being proud of your country. It's about making America the main power in space for the next 100 years. And here's why this changes everything for all of us. What happens if SpaceX can really do this? We're not just talking about a base on the moon. We could be seeing the start of the first real civilization that travels in space. But let's talk about the big problem in the room first. Starship still hasn't proven it can get to the moon every time. The special moon landing version is still pretty much just an idea. Refueling in space has never been done, and the machine to tip the ship sideways is only on paper. With the Artemis 3 mission planned for 2026, these are not small problems. They are huge goals they have to hit or the whole thing fails. Still, here's what's really amazing about what SpaceX has done before. They have always done the things that seemed impossible. Rockets that can be used again? Check. Sending people to the space station in their own ship? Done. They made the most powerful rocket in the world that actually works. When Gwyn Shotwell promised NASA that Starship will be ready, people believe her because SpaceX has shown they can do what they say. In the next year and a half, there will be three very important Starship test flights, and then up to 25 flights in 2025, including the new and improved V3 model. This isn't just for practice. It's the biggest and fastest program to build a spacecraft ever in history. But there's a bigger reason for all this that most people don't see. Moon Base Alpha isn't really about the moon. It's about proving that people can build lasting homes on other worlds. If it works, it shows that the whole idea of using your transport ship as your house works, which opens the door for cities on Mars, mining asteroids, and one day, homes in space that last forever. The money part is huge. If SpaceX shows that building things in space can be done for cheap and real fast, it totally changes how people think about spending money on space companies. All of a sudden, making things on the moon starts to make sense for businesses. Space vacations change from short trips to long stays. Getting metals from asteroids goes from being a sci-fi story to a real business plan. Why is this important for people back on Earth? Because stuff from space could fix problems we have with not having enough of things. Helium-3 from the moon could totally change how we get clean energy. Metals from asteroids could make prices for metal crash while giving us tons of materials to build things on Earth. Water from space could help us explore more and maybe even give Earth more water. But there are still big problems besides just getting there. We don't know how living in a spaceship on its side for a long time will affect people's minds. Getting hit by space rays, even with dirt for a shield, is still a danger to your health. If machines break, it's a life or death problem when help is 240,000 miles away. And here's the final big question. What happens if the sideways flip doesn't work? SpaceX would still have a working base that stands upright, but it wouldn't be as good for staying a long time. The real danger isn't that it won't work. It's that it will be late, giving other people time to come up with their own ideas. But no matter what happens right away, we are watching a huge moment in the history of people. The choices made in the next few years will decide if humans stay on just one planet, stuck on Earth forever, or if we take our first real steps to becoming a civilization that lives on many planets. The Moon Base Alpha idea is more than just a cool new invention. It's the first real try by people to make a lasting home away from Earth. If it works, it doesn't just win a space race. It opens up the whole universe for people to explore and live in. The countdown has already started, and it couldn't be more important for where our kind will end up among the stars. This is exactly why SpaceX's sideways trick could change all the rules of space travel forever. What started as a problem that seemed impossible to solve, safely turning a giant rocket on the moon's surface, 
has turned out to be the key to humanity's first home on another world that can last. What this means is we're not just watching a new way to build moon bases. We're watching a whole new idea for settling in space being born. An idea where your ride becomes your house. Where just one trip can build a home that stays forever. And where spending money on living in space finally makes sense. The bigger picture here is that this idea isn't just for the moon. If SpaceX proves they can turn a starship into a home on the moon, the same idea works for trips to Mars, for mining asteroids, and for exploring deep space. We're looking at a plan for spreading human life all over the solar system. And this is only the beginning. The next 18 months will show if this big idea becomes real or if it stays just a cool dream. Three super important Starship test flights are coming up, with up to 25 more trips next year. Every flight gets us closer to knowing the answer to the big question. Can humans really become a species that travels through space? But here's what I'm really wondering. Do you think this sideways plan is the amazing new idea we've been waiting for? Or are there dangers that SpaceX isn't thinking about? How do you think this will all happen in the next few years? This is Pulse, and we look deep into the amazing machines and smart moves that are making our future in space. If you want to know more about the space race stuff that really matters, you know what to do. Because one thing is for sure, the next part of human exploration is being written right now. And it's happening faster than anyone ever thought. So, SpaceX's Flight 10 landed almost perfectly, just three meters from its target. But Elon Musk just told everyone about a big problem with a vent that almost messed up the whole mission. Secret data shows how rocket fuel leaked into the engine area when cooling vents got clogged in the middle of the flight. But, this mistake actually proves something very important about how tough the Starship really is. What did SpaceX learn that no computer game could ever teach them? Let's get right into it. Here's what Elon Musk's secret data really shows about the vent problem on Flight 10, and it's not what anybody thought. 47 minutes into its quiet trip through space, with all the engines turned off and Ship 37 just floating, the engine area exploded in a big orange fireball. Nothing set it off, there was no clear reason why, and no engines were firing. For weeks, space experts guessed it was everything from leftover fuel catching fire to a huge crack in the ship's body. But the new videos and the reports after the mission tell a totally different story. It's a story that shows both big problems and amazing toughness in the Starship's design. The Big Clue cameras on the ship saw something important that people missed at first. It was purposely letting out gas from its cooling pipes just seconds before the explosion. This isn't just letting out gas into the air. It's the sign of a chain reaction of problems that actually started way earlier in the flight. Here's the real engineering reason for what happened. The Raptor engines use something called chill conditioning. Two, it's a very important step before they light up where super-cold methane and liquid oxygen flow through the engine's pumps, sprayers, and inside pipes to slowly cool everything down to the right temperature. Think of it like pouring ice water into a super-hot glass. If you don't do this slow cooling, and just throw super-cold fuel into warm parts, it creates a thermal shock that can crack seals, bend metal parts, or make the engines light up in a dangerous, shaky way. When everything is working right, the extra fuel from this cooling process goes out safely through special vent pipes placed around the ship's bottom, getting rid of the methane and oxygen where they can't build up or cause a fire. It's a really smart system that worked perfectly on the flights before this one. But the info from Flight 10 shows that those important vent pipes got blocked or clogged up, maybe from ice or from sucking in some junk. When super cold gases can't get out the way they're supposed to, the pressure builds up really, really fast until something breaks in a big way. That's exactly what the information from the ship shows happened. The pipes burst on the inside, flooding the closed-off engine area with a dangerous mix of methane and oxygen. Near the hot parts and electrical wires in that area, a fire wasn't just possible, it was going to happen for sure. And here's the deeper meaning that not many people get. This wasn't just some random part that broke. 